Hey everybody, hey everybody, welcome to the message today. Hey, uh, my name's Josh, I'm one of the pastors here at Lifehouse and just so excited to be sharing God's Word with you this special Sunday. And uh, hey, we've been doing a series uh, during our Half of the House campaign called No So No Grow. And I hope you've been enjoying that. And uh, Half of the House is just such a special season of sowing into the future of the church and um, uh, just so excited and going to be sharing a little bit on that later. And I've called today's message, We Sow, God Grows. We Sow, God Grows. You know, it's our job to sow seeds, but it's God's job to grow those seeds. And we see this in a story that Jesus is telling um, in Matthew chapter 13. If you've got your Bibles, you can look it up. And it says, um, he told them many things in parables, saying a farmer went out to sow his seed. And in this story, um, I believe there's, you know, there's, there's different ways we can look at the stories. But I want to see us as the farmer going out to sow our seeds. And it says, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Have you ever done something for God or you've done something in your life and you've put in all your energy and you've, you've, you've produced something, you've given something and, you know, the very next day it fails? Um, you know, I'm sure we've all done that. And that's what happened here. It says the birds, they sowed the seed and the birds just came along and ate it up. Um, don't get disappointed because there's more seeds. We've got to keep sowing. It says some seed fell on rocky places or it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. And sometimes in church life and um, as a pastor, sometimes it feels a bit like this. We're sowing seeds. Um, we're reaching people. Sometimes things look amazing. This new project looks like it's going great. Uh, this person is so awesome, has accepted Jesus. And, and sometimes things don't last that long or the root didn't have a chance to get deep or there was something prohibiting the growth there. Don't get disappointed because we're going to keep sowing. It says other seed fell among thorns which grew up and eh, they choked the plants and and this also isn't great and <laughs> it's not doing great so far and and sometimes this is a seed that's sown and someone or can receive the word and 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 receive the good news about Jesus um, but sometimes the devil has got attacks or there maybe not some good influences in their life and can sometimes um, choke that truth out but here we are this is why we're here verse eight it says still other seed fell on good soil I believe that's you and me um, where it produced a crop. And are you ready? It says 160 or 30 times what was sown. This is the God factor. You know, when we sow, not every seed bears great fruit. Not every seed um, goes on to become a tree. But there are some seeds that grow and produce a crop, produce plants or produce trees um, 160 or 30 times what was sown. And then Jesus says something great here. And this is why I wanted to talk on this verse and God was speaking to me um, as I was preparing this message. He says, whoever has ears, let them hear. Basically, Jesus is saying, listen up. Come on, why don't you check the person next to you um, if you're watching in person or <laughs> why don't you ask the question online? Do you have ears? Have a look in the mirror. Do you have ears today? Because if you've got ears, I believe God wants to speak to you about sowing this season. And, and I just love that, that some seeds are going to produce 160 or 30 times what was sown. You know, there's an old saying, and it's always stuck with me. It says, you can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. I'll say that again in case you missed it. You can count the number of seeds in an apple, um, but you can't count the number of apples in one seed. What it's saying is when we sow a seed, that that seed can go on to become a tree and that tree can go on to, to produce much fruit. And I believe that's the same concept that Jesus is painting um, in this story. There's a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown, um, but it's up to us to be seed, uh, seed sowers. Um, you know, God wants us to be fruitful. Oftentimes the thing about a seed and in a natural time that, that plants naturally drop seeds um, towards the end of summer and autumn, seeds are often sown during a tough time. And if you're going through a tough time, maybe you've been through a tough time in this last season, um, don't worry, that's actually the best time to sow a seed. You see, as a seed sits dormant through the winter months, there's no nutrition, there's no rain, there's, no, there's not much sun, there's not much sustenance. When it comes time to spring, 
all of a sudden that seed can burst into life and that harvest comes out in the springtime. Come on, let's be listening because I believe we've been sowing seeds. Yes, it's been um, tough in some areas and good in some areas, but I believe as we've been sowing seeds during all this season, we're going to reap a harvest of 160 or 30 times. Come on, do you believe that? Today, come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, let's, uh, let's check the person next to us from, for some ears and say, listen up. So the first thing I want to say to you today is, um, sowing with the God factor is so exciting. Sowing with the God factor is so exciting. You know, there's something amazing that happens as we sow our seeds. Um, we, we sow into something, but we do it um, with God's grace. Um, this is what happens as we tithe, um, as we give each month, as we put God first in our finance. The tithe is so special because it's not just the first of our income and we're not just giving to charity or giving to support something. No, the tithe, it says in the Bible, is actually holy to God. So as we bring the tithe to God, we're actually giving something, a physical sacrifice. We're actually saying, God, I want to put you first in my life by, by giving you this sacrifice, this first tenth of my income. But we're actually combining it with God's supernatural power and, and anything can happen. And that's why tithing, and that's why I love tithing, Yuki and I, um, my wife and I, we, we love tithing. We love giving every month because something amazing can happen. Um, this Heart for the House season, it's always a great season for us. And we, we pray together and we, we decide in our hearts and we ask God, and what shall we give? And usually I go to Yuki with a number and um, she usually comes back to me with a number and her number is always double my number um, <laughs> and and we give and there's something amazing we're saying God we know this is a seed um, we're giving it to heart for the house for our permanent venue or to buy a venue one day and we know we don't even have that venue yet or we don't know where it is but God we want to combine our faith with your supernatural power because we love this God factor and Mark chapter 4 Jesus talked about it again he says the kingdom of God um, is, is like a man scattering seed and in verse 27 he says night and day Day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the, so the soil produces grain. And I just love this. It's this factor of as we sow a seed, we don't get a result there and then. But even as we are sleeping, God is at work in people's lives. Even, even as we relax, um, God is speaking to us. Um, e e even as we sow a seed into someone's life, maybe the, the first time they heard about Jesus or heard about church, they, they rejected it. God can still speak to those people over time. You know, um, the God factor is so excited. We don't know who's going to respond to Jesus. I remember many, many years ago um, in Yokohama and we were starting our church there and, and um, we used to meet people at the station and help them um, find our venue because we didn't have the nicest venue. It was, it was a bit far from the station. And I remember Yuki, my wife, um, at that time, she was on the, the welcome team at the station. We were meeting people at the station and we had like candies. Um, <laughs> we were giving out free candy or something um, at the station. I remember a young guy called Genki. He just happened to be going through the station. I was on a, on a Saturday night and, um, you know, my wife said, you know, that with the team there, would you like some candy? And he guys and candy? So thanks. Why, why are you guys giving out candy? And they're like, well, we're part of the welcome team at Lifehouse at our church. Would you like to come along? And I remember Genki on that first day, I saw him come into, come into church and he kept coming every single week since that day. He made a decision to follow Jesus. Um, he, he, he met a great girl, uh, also got saved in church called Akio. They have an amazing family. Um, great son now, Tayo. Um, you don't know who's going to respond to seed. You don't know in that case um, who's going to respond to a little bit of candy at the station. Um, we don't know when we sow into something like Heart for the House or when we give financially who we're going to impact. But this is what makes it so exciting. Come on, let's give God some praise. Let's get excited about sowing seed because the God factor is amazing. The second thing I want to say about sowing seeds is that our job is to sow, but it's God's job to grow. And if we mix those two things up, we're going to get disappointed. If we think it's God's job to sow and my job to grow, well, one, it's not God's job to sow, so there's not going to be many seeds sown. And two, we actually can't grow things on our own. We actually need God's help. 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul knew this and he says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. The one who plants or the one who waters is anything, isn't anything, but only God who makes it grow. And so let's not confuse our roles. Let's not think, hey, um, this all depends on me because of what I'm giving to heart for the house or because what I'm doing, serving at church, um, it, it all depends on me. No, no, no. That's the wrong way of thinking. Together, um, we're a team. You know, our church is not built on equal giving, but it is built on equal sacrifice. And together we're sowing seeds and together we're reaching our cities. Um, and we've got to trust God. And as a pastor, this is really means we can, we can have a stress-free life. Hey, God, I'm going to do my best. Um, I'm going to sow seeds. But God, in the end, I'm trusting that it's you um, who's reaching people. I'm trusting that it's you who's growing the church. And sometimes we're going to sow seeds over a long period of time and we don't understand why things haven't grown yet. But God does because His seasons are perfect and His timing is never late and it's never early. It's like the Japanese trains, always on time, never late, never early. And we've got to trust. Our job is to continue to sow seeds. Um, here at Lifehouse for many, many years, um, we've actually been sowing into the great country of India. Come on, put your hand up if you love India. I personally love India. I've been there many times with our missions teams. Hopefully uh, in 2022 next year, we'll be able to resume our missions teams going over to India and um, meeting people and helping people on the streets and in the poor areas. And of course, eating some good curry and helping build the churches there and uh, Tejas Asia. Um, and I uh, really love India. And we've been sowing into India with, with finance um, for many, many years now um, about 10 years sowing into India and giving towards our projects there and our schools there sowing into India um, and I think we have deep down our desire that one day and it's, I know this is in Pastor Rod's heart that one day we would plant a church or one day we would have a church and actually we tried to plant a church some time ago um, but it didn't quite work out the timing wasn't quite there um, and, and but we always had that hey we're not doing it to receive anything but we're just going to sow into India and sow into India and sow into India and, and, and knowing that God is a good God anyway uh, fast forward last year just one year ago as we're sowing into India and had conversations conversations that, hey, maybe this is the time during this, this, this season, this um, online season, maybe we can start something into Bangalore in India um, online and use that. And then we had some people moving there. One of our great couples um, was moving there. And as we started to sow that seed, all of a sudden, um, Pastor Michael um, from India reached out to us and he said, I just wanted to welcome you guys to Bangalore. And we said, well, thank you. That's great. Hey, here another church or a pastor welcoming us. And uh, he said, actually, we, we love you guys and we're trying to get to your conference and he said actually we've been following you guys for a few years now and we thought oh that's awesome wow it's good to have friends in the same city and he actually said well our, he's actually he said well the name of our church is actually Lifehouse also <laughs> can you believe it and then we were like what and he's like actually um, we really love your vision and our young people of you know they love the grow course and and they love the services and he's saying can we can we join with you? Can we, can we help be part of what you're doing here in India? Come on, let's give God a praise for that. Now we don't just have Bangalore, but we've got uh, churches in Chennai and Trichy and Kumbata, and we're starting other services um, in different places um, as well. God is good. Come on, when you continue to sow seeds, you're going to reap a harvest, but sometimes you don't know when. And the third thing I want to say about sowing seeds is that a farmer, we got to wait for the harvest. We can't force the harvest, but a farmer waits for the harvest, but no one works harder than the farmer. You know, we don't, we're not saved through our works. We don't have to work a lot to, imp to impress God or to get God's love. God the Father, He just loves us for who we are. It doesn't matter how much we sow. It doesn't, he doesn't love us anymore. We know that we've got to wait on the harvest. We know we've got to wait on God. But I tell you what, a farmer is going to work pretty hard in the meantime. And, and Paul knew this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 9. He says, I'm the least of the apostles. I don't even deserve to be called an apostle. But in verse 10, he says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than them all, yet not I, 
but the grace of God that was within me. And uh, I want to encourage you. We can't just sit back and, and let the harvest come. No, I believe God wants us to be active participants, sowing seeds, um, reaching people. Um, it, you, yes, God is moving, but in the meantime, we're going to play our part. And, and it's, none of this is striving. None of this is stressful, but we're trusting God and His grace. And sometimes people will ask me, how do I know that if this is God's will? How do I know if I'm in the right area? And I say, well, is there grace? Do you have peace? Are things going well? Um, you know, do you have peace in your heart from God? And if so, you're probably in the grace zone. You're, you're probably in the right place and God's, God's moving um, in your life. But if you're stressed, if you're worried, if you're overworked, maybe you need to look at that and say, hey, am I trying to do too many things? Um, on our own. Uh, this last year, we've also had an amazing miracle. Um, we've actually been able to start our Zoe International School. The word Zoe means life, full life. And uh, we have an online campus available all across Japan and also a physical location um, here where I am in Yokohama as well. And this is one of these areas where, yes, God is moving and God is doing many things, but also there's a lot of work to be done. There's curriculum and there's teaching teachers and and there's we've got to we've got to get students we've got to find the venue and we've got to talk to the real estate and we've got to we've got to work out the uh, the accounting and the taxes and and all different type of thing and and God is moving and the harvest is coming and 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 God is going to bring um, everything that we need but in the meantime yeah there's a lot of stuff to do and we're going to get it done um, in God's grace and um, there's a grace and there's a season on things and I want to encourage you um, if you're stressed or if you're striving right now, maybe we need to look at that and say, God, I need to trust you more in some areas. But what are some things that I can work on right now? You know, in this, in this time when many things in many places across the world are, are online first or online only, we'd get frustrated if we were trying to do things in person or physical or, or trying to do things in the old way. Instead, we've got to learn to say, hey, what can I do right now? Um, in this new area, in this new zone. And God, I'm going to trust you that you're going to bring the harvest. And that's what we've been doing with the school. And just amazingly, God has done miracle after miracle after miracle that we could only look at each other and say, wow, God is really up to something here. I'm so glad we're putting in all the effort. I'm so glad we're working hard. Our, our teachers are certainly, are, are certainly are working hard and launching a new school. But above that, we're also doing that. But we also know that in the end, God is in control and we're trusting God in this. So as we finish today, I want to bring you some applications, um, three practical things, three factors that can determine the size of your harvest. And um, actually in Australia, I'm from Australia, um, in, in case you haven't noticed um, by now, but my dad is actually a horticulturalist. Um, he actually has a doctorate in plants. He's actually a plant doctor. And growing up my house and then my, my garden, everything is always full of experiments, always something happens. Um, and so I know a little bit about gardening. I'm not a good gardener, but I know a little bit. Um, but I want to leave you with three practical things today, three factors that determine the size of your harvest. And number one, if you're taking notes, number one is the soil. If you want to have a large harvest, you need to be sowing into good soil. Psalm 92 says, um, those, the righteous will flourish like a palm tree. Verse 13, planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish. They will bear fruit in old age and they will stay fresh and green. You know, without the right soil, without putting down roots, the plant will never grow into its full potential. And so I want to encourage you, um, be part of a local church. If you're watching this service, you're probably part of a Lifehouse church. I want to encourage you, put roots down um, into your church. What does that mean? What are the roots? Well, I want to encourage you, make some time every week to be part of a service, um, whether that's in person or online. Set aside some time. I'm going to hear the message. I'm going to connect with God, connect with people. Um, if you have and already go through the grow course you can see the link below this is us putting down roots and and understanding what church is about um, if you're not already join a connect group be part of a connect group um, if you're not already consider joining the dream team um, if you're not already why don't you consider putting God first in your tithes and in your offerings each month as we put God first um, 
consider being part of this, this campaign, our Heart for the House campaign towards our future venue. This is all of us putting down roots. And what happens, there's a type of tree here in Japan that doesn't have any roots. It has shallow roots. Um, it's called a bonsai tree. And uh, you can see some pictures or videos there. And, and a bonsai tree is just a normal tree, um, but it doesn't they don't let the roots grow. So as the roots grow, they cut off the roots. And actually, they keep it in a very small pot without much soil. And then as it, as it, as it grows, they, they move it into smaller and smaller pots. And what happens is it grows, old, it grows old, but it doesn't grow up. It just gets older and older and older. And that same seed can either become a giant tree or that same seed with the no roots and no soil can actually become a tiny bonsai tree. And I want to encourage you, don't become a bonsai Christian. Come on, let's be planting. If you're not planted yet, come on, get connected at your local Lifehouse Church today. That's the soil. The second thing that a big harvest need is water. We need to be hearing from God. Um, Here at Lifehouse, um, we encourage every person to be journaling. That's just um, hearing the voice of God every day by reading the Bible and writing down what God was speaking to us. Come on, let's be self-feeders. Even Jesus says, man doesn't live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. And um, let's not wait until Sunday to hear the message and get fed. Let's not be starving, 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 starving. Oh, Sunday, I'm going to eat as much as I can. No, let's be eating regularly and healthily every day. Um, There's a great guy in our church and he got connected in church just over a year ago, just before we went into the online season called Ryoto. And he got saved. He made a decision to follow Jesus. and, and, um, and, And a few weeks later, I kind of messaged him and I said, how are you doing? It's online. Everything's new. And he says, he says, oh, it's, everything's new. I don't even know what really a normal service is like. But he said, I've been reading the Bible every day. I've been journaling um, just like I was taught in church. And God is speaking to me every day. Well, fast forward over a year, a year and a half now. And Ryoto has journaled every single day for over 400 days days now and he's actually read through the whole bible and he's reading back through it and i tell you what i'm not worried about Ryoto. i know he's strong because he's in the word of god i know his harvest is growing come on let's give god some praise for that come on we've got to be self-feeders self-waterers in the word of god and the last thing the last factor i want to encourage you with is we need the sun um you know three things that 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 seeds need is the soil, the water, and the sun. And I believe this is the most important factor. This is the God factor. Um, If you're a science mind out there, uh, you would understand this. If you're not in science, don't worry. But there's a concept called photosynthesis where plants, they take in carbon dioxide um, from the from the soil and they take in water from the air. So they're in the soil and the water from the air and they transform the water into oxygen and the carbon dioxide into energy for themselves. They give back out oxygen and they get energy. I think this is just such a great picture. And they release the oxygen into the air and they store that energy. And hey, as Christians, we don't need the sun. Maybe it's good to get a suntan or get to the beach um, in summer. But I tell you what, we don't live in the light of the sun, but we do live in the light of the sun. And I'm not talking about the, the physical sun, the hot sun. I'm talking about the Son of God. I'm talking about Jesus who gave up His life on the cross to, to bring us forgiveness and salvation. And we need to be planted in church. We need to be hearing the Word of God. But more than everything, uh, we need to be living in the light of the sun who came down to bring us forgiveness and give us a new start. Wow, you can feel the Holy Spirit right now. Come on, let's give God some praise right now if you're thankful for all the that Jesus has done for you, for us. And carbon dioxide, um, it's, not the, it's not the greatest thing. It actually will kill you if you have too much of it. And that's kind of, I think, our mistakes are our sin. And as we get the, those mistakes, but we combine it um, with the water, with God's word, with God's power and our open heart, I believe that Jesus can turn that completely around and, and, and do something amazing in our hearts. So, and actually um, can give us a new start and we can live with purpose and energy. And I believe we can also give out and breathe and inspire other people here today. Come on, we need to be living in the light of the sun. And as I finish here today, I'll wrap up and I want to pray for you today. But I want to share the story. Just uh, two years ago, there's a young man in our church and his name was Shota. And uh, he's an amazing guy. And uh, actually, uh, 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 some people in our church, Monty and Mark, and they actually met him on the bus on the way to university one day. And, and um, you know, they know and love Jesus. And they were heading to that university for a university lunch. They actually met Shalter and they talked to him. And he was very open 
um, and, and he, wanted, he was interested in English and he came along to church and, and guess what? He made a decision to follow Jesus and, and he got baptized um, on the beach. This was several years ago and Shota, he was just the most amazing light. He brought many people to church. He's a great leader and a friend. Um, he was starting Lifehouse College and he wanted to intern and, and it was just a really great example of living in the light of the sun and he, he, he loved that. He loved Street Live and he loved University Outreach because that's where he got to know about Jesus. Um, and he loved just giving out and bringing people to church. Well, two years ago, um, that Sholta actually, uh, his life was cut short. Um, he, in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, he had a seizure um, in his brain and, and he didn't live through that. And actually two years ago, um, actually I had to do his funeral with many people from our church and many of his loved ones and his family. Um, and this week I saw all the posts and I saw that people were just so impacted by his full life. And many people were just saying, thank you, Sholta. Um, thank you, Sholta. I was able to come to church. Or thank you, Sholta, for just bringing light. And thank you, Sholta. And I thought, that's a really an amazing story of people being impacted. Monsi and Mark were impacted by Jesus, receiving forgiveness, receiving the light, giving out to others, meeting Sholta, him doing the same um, in return. And, and many people impacted by that story. And I want to encourage you, that's what happens when we sow seeds. When we sow seeds, we don't know who we're going to meet. When we sow finances, we don't know who's going to meet on the pastoral team. When we sow into something like Half of the House campaign, we don't know the future generations, all of those people that are going to get to know Jesus. But I tell you what, there's something so excited when we play our part and we sow our seeds and we give sacrificially and God does something with His supernatural power and that later on that God is going to reach people and we can say, I was part of that. When that happens, I was part of that. And I'm sure Sholta here today is just up in heaven, just cheering us on, you know, as we go from strength to strength, not just in Yokohama, but all across our Lifehouse churches and all across Asia and the world now. Come on, the harvest is plentiful. The work is a few. Let's be part of the harvest. Let's be part of sowing these amazing seeds. And so if that's you today, you want to be committed to, to sowing seeds and reaping a large harvest. Um, come on, let's pray together right now. So God, just thank you for every person joining us for today's message. God, I pray that you'd be speaking to us about sowing seeds. No sow, no grow. God, help us always be committed to be sowing seeds. God, I thank you that it's not up to us. We sow the seeds, but you're going to grow the seeds into an amazing harvest. And God, I pray that we would never lose sight of the why. The why is the people, God. And uh, as we give to this Heart for the House campaign, to, to permanent venues, to buying venues, God, I pray that you'd be speaking into our hearts. It would be giving sacrificially, that our church we would know is not built on equal giving, but equal sacrifice. That we'd all be giving something. And God, I just thank you for all those future generations as we put down seeds, as we put down roots into our cities. God, just thank you for all those future generations, those future people who are going to be impacted, who are going to be in heaven because we sowed a seed today. And we just give you all the praise and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise here today. And hey, just lastly, um, if you're joining us here today and you don't yet know God, I want to just take time just to pray for you. And in a moment, I'm going to count to three and say now. And if you want to get to know Jesus, I want to ask you to pray a prayer with me just to invite Jesus into your life. You know, God sent Jesus to give us a new start. He died on the cross as a sacrifice to take away our sin and bring us forgiveness and a new start. He rose again with power over death and sin. And so if you want to make a decision to start walking with God, when I say now, let's pray a prayer to invite Jesus in your life together. One, two, three, now. Dear Jesus, I believe in you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise here today. Congratulations. If you've made that decision, that's the best decision you're ever going to make in your life. Come on, today is a day you can start walking with God. Fantastic. Well, have a great week, guys. Remember, jump online or give in person. Come on, let's all be part of our Heart for the House campaign. Let's be reaching our cities together, sowing seeds, growing a huge harvest. Come on, the God factor is amazing. Can't wait to hear all the good things that God does in your city. Have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye.